Hello everyone, my name is Deb and I am so excited to be here with you guys. We are going to be talking about our next lesson in the book, The Wise Woman Knows. And this lesson has been talking about the wise woman loves her children and the wise woman cares for her home. Guys, these are two very, very important topics for uh, all of us moms because we're all homemakers. Whether we work a, a job full time or if we stay at home full time, we're all homemakers. So we need to be talking about caring for our home and we also need to talk about loving our children. So we're going to talk about both of those topics today. And uh, these cover page 23 to page 43. And before I get started, I want to remind you guys, remember to pray with your prayer partner this week. And if you don't have a prayer partner, talk to someone. Uh, if you're in a small group or a church group, talk to your leader about it. Or uh, if you're just listening to this video or just listening on the podcast or watching it on YouTube, uh, ask the Lord to bring you a prayer partner because praying with a friend once a week for 10 minutes is super powerful. It will change your life. I could not do what I'm doing today without my prayer partners. I call my friends every single day and I pray with someone. It is like I would die without my prayer partners. And so um, anyway, just a little tip. Make sure you're praying with your prayer partner. It only takes 10 minutes once a week. All right. Okay. The next thing I want to talk to you about is I am doing all of the videos for the Wise Woman Knows book in this room that I call Gigi's room. And it's my grandmother room. It's the room where I have my granddaughter's little crib. Uh, I have two granddaughters and uh, we're working on the other room, but right now she sleeps in a pack and play in my son's room. But it's been nice changing out my kids' rooms and making them into grandma rooms, Gigi's room. And the reason I'm meeting here is because, and doing the videos is because I want you guys to think about your future. I want you to think about someday you're going to be a Gigi or a Mimi or a grandma, whatever you want to go, whatever your grandma name, name will be. But right now you're building into your family and you're building into the kind of a life uh, and the kind of a person you're going to be when you're my age and when you're a grandma. And the word says in Proverbs 14, verse one, the wise woman builds her house. And you guys, it's not talking about building a, like a house, house, you know, like a proverbial house or, a, you know, a house like with beams and stuff. It's talking about what's on the inside of your home. It's talking about building up a strong family. It's talking about making your house a home and having a Christian home and a home that brings glory to Jesus. And that is what we all want to do as women. So that when you're my age and you're a Gigi, you can look back and you have so many wonderful memories stored up and in your heart, you, you are cultivating a heart for God with wisdom. And guys, all of us make mistakes. I will be the first one to say I have made a million mistakes with my kids and God's grace is so good and my kids are so kind to me. <laughs> and they, you know, we all forgive each other when we make mistakes. And so I'm not sitting here today saying I have a perfect life because I don't, but God is perfect and he makes all things new. And so if you've made mistakes in your life, God makes all things new. And it's our job to receive them. The word of God says that God's mercies are new every morning. And it's our job to walk out that mercy, to walk out that grace, to receive forgiveness from God and to walk in the newness of life. Not looking back at the things, the mistakes that we made, but looking forward at the plans that God's calling us into. And so that's just a little word for some of you guys, if you're struggling or if you feel like you've made a lot of mistakes. I have, I had a group over here the other night and several of the moms were just saying they felt like the worst moms in the world. But you know what? It's not true. That is the enemy and a condemning uh, spirit that is, uh, is telling you those things. And your heart uh, should be focused on the Lord and let him love on you and tell you that he loves you and he's proud of you and he's helping you. And when you make a mistake, it's, you're just like a little child. You run to him and you say, I'm sorry, help me, Jesus, help me to be the best mom I can be. Okay. So we're going to talk about wisdom. Okay. And I'm going to talk about wisdom as it has to do with your children and your home. But before I go into that, I want to talk to you about the mom tips. Remember guys to do your mom tips these mom tips are the best of the best uh, that we had at Help Club, the, the ideas that helped us with our children, and they're really good. And I want to focus on one on page 24 of the book, and these are the mom tips. They look like that, okay? And this one right here is under The Wise Woman Loves Her Children on page 24, and it says, Every day this week, ask your kids something new. Instead of, how was your day or how was school, ask something like, how can I pray for you tonight? What was the best part of your day? 
What did you do to have fun today? Or what did you do to grow closer to God? And in our home, every night at dinner, and we try to have dinners as much as possible with our children. Um, and that's a little word for maybe some of you guys that um, are too busy. If you're too busy to have family dinners, you're just really too busy. Ask the Lord to show you anything in your schedule that if, if you're overloading your schedule and you're not even having time to connect as a family, what can you do to change that? I, it's so important to have family dinners because all of those sports and activities, they fade away. But what you have when your kids are into adulthood are, are family memories. And of course you have memories of them and their sports and activities. But what you have the most is your family memories. And our dinner table memories are wonderful. And we would go around the table and we would, uh, we would talk to each other and we would say, hey, what was the best thing that happened to you? Or sometimes we would say, hi, low, what's the best thing that happened to you? And what was a challenging thing that happened to you? And it was always good to open up those conversations so we knew what was happening with our children. You know, the word says in Proverbs 31 that she looks well to the ways of her household. And part of looking well to the ways of your household is knowing what's going on in your children's hearts. And sometimes we can just be responsive to our children's behavior instead of asking God to show us our children's hearts. Do you know what? I love this scripture and it is Proverbs. Let me see here. I wrote it down. It is Proverbs 20 verse 5. The purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but one who has insight draws them out. And you may be having a child or a teenager, or maybe you and your husband aren't connecting and he's grouchy or something. And you may be like, God, what is going on? Ask God to show you. I would pray this all the time. God, show me how to speak to my family in a way that draws them closer to me. And you want to be a mom who speaks to your children and your husband in a way that draws them closer to you. And so by asking God for wisdom, for what's really going in their hearts, you'll know. God will give you a glimpse. He'll tell you something that's really going on in their hearts. And then you can address it. For our children, we used to love to lay in bed with them. This is my daughter's bed, and I I laid in bed with her till she got married. Till the night before she got married, I was laying in bed with her, talking with her. And cultivating a great relationship with your children takes work, it takes effort, it takes time. I would much rather have been downstairs reading a book or watching a movie, but I just decided a long time ago that I was going to spend time with my children at night, and my husband did too. So we would talk to them about what's what's happened in your day or how do you feel about the other kids or are they nice to you and how does that make you feel? And you can ask the Lord to tell you uh, what's going on in their hearts. And I want to read this scripture to you because, guys, wisdom is available to all who ask. And I love what uh, Proverbs 2 verse uh Verse three says, and if you call aloud for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as hidden treasure, I mean, we are supposed to be seeking wisdom as hidden treasure and understanding as hidden treasure and part of understanding with our children. Like think about all the children that are depressed nowadays. There's so many kids that are depressed, so many suicides. And I always wish that those children had someone in their life that was saying, hey, how are you? How are you really doing? And I think that uh, working on the offense with your children by spending time with them, taking them out on little dates to coffee or shopping or something, but just connecting with them so that they will open up their hearts to you is super important. But I want to read to you from Proverbs verse 9. And I want you to think about this. God is shouting his wisdom for all to see. Wisdom is speaking out. She's calling aloud for anyone who wants it. Guys, he will tell us, but we have to search as it for hidden jewels. We have to search at it as, as if it was valuable, right? Nothing you desire compares with her. Wisdom is so important. But listen to this. Proverbs 9, I'll start in verse 1. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her maids and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come in here, she says to those who lack judgment. Come eat my food and drink my wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and you will live. Walk in the way of understanding. 
And then I'm going to scoot down to verse 9. Instruct a wise man and he will be wiser still. Teach a righteous man and he will add to his learning. Verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Get this, listen to this, guys. For through me, your days will be many and, your, and years will be added to your life. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. Your wisdom, asking God for wisdom in your home will reward you for someday when you're my age. Uh, if you're a mocker, you alone will suffer. Now listen to this, okay? There's also another voice calling out for you. And she's called Folly, the woman Folly. And wisdom calls out and Folly calls out. Don't listen to Folly. Folly's loud. Okay, I'm going to read this to you. Proverbs 9, starting in verse 13. The woman Folly is loud. She is undisciplined and without knowledge. And listen to where she sits. She sits at the door of her house on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by, who go on their way. Let all who are simple come in here, she says to those who lack judgment. You guys, wisdom is calling and folly is calling. Folly is the world's way of being a mom. Wisdom is God's way of being a mom. And your job as a Christian wife and mother is to go to God or a single mom, whatever, wherever you find yourself in life. If you're a brand new mom or if you're an empty nest mom watching this video, your job is to seek out wisdom one day at a time, one moment at a time. Wisdom is always calling to you. God has so much wisdom, but he wants you to ask. He wants you to turn your heart to him and ask him for help. Okay, so let's pray. Thank you for being part of our community. Thank you for going through this book with us. We sure are thankful. And uh, thank you for, for reading our book. Thank you for studying with us. Thank you for being part of our, of our ministry, of our community. We just love you so much. Father, I thank you for every person watching this video or listening to the podcast, going through the Bible study with us. God, I pray that you would help us all to seek wisdom. I pray, Father, that we would be the wise women who build our houses. I pray for each of my friends here that no matter what season they are in their life, God, they will work on becoming wise women with the power of the Holy Spirit by asking you for wisdom, asking you for help. Show them what's going on in their children and their husbands' hearts. Show them what's really happening in their lives, God. Help them to hear your voice and obey you and to walk in the ways of wisdom. Guard them from folly. Don't let, let them listen to worldly philosophies. God, turn their hearts away from worldly teachings. May they turn to you, spend time with you, write down what you're telling them and obey and do what you're telling them to do. Let their feet move in the ways that you are calling them to do. Bless them in their home with their husband and children. If they're married with their husband, if not, if they're single mom, bless them in the, especially the next couple of weeks uh, until we can be back together again. In Jesus name, amen. Hey, thank you guys for watching. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Goodbye.